。睇片之前记得订阅如一 YouTube， 有你哋嘅支持，我哋先至可以走得更远。Cinema contemporary or cinema, and did you see any any great films that you were you impressed by? Thank you. Yes, there was a question here. I, Yamoga. I speak in Cantonese. I will easy to answer for you. Okay. 誒而家嘅電影咧，我覺得係差咗嘅，全球嘅電影都差咗。喺我自己睇電影嘅世界咧，好似漸漸消失，唔係我以前嘅對電影嘅世界。誒、呃，我希望呢樣嘢只係暫時嘅。可能我講嘢好大膽，但係呢個係我真心嘅説話。Good to see you all because it's a humbling moment for me. Three years ago it was the last time at Berlinale because of the pandemic. Now it's the first time being back again in Berlin, and it feels so good seeing you all here. It's like 2019. It's great. It's amazing because my boss told me two years ago, cinema is dead. I don't think so. If you can give me all a little homage to cinema because we are all here with. What's his name? What's his address? <laughs> because because of all the streaming thing, but if I look at Avatar 2 and all the other films came out, cinema isn't dead. It's still a Life. And if you can give us all a statement, why cinema is so important for us? Sitting in a dark room with the audience, watching a movie on a big screen. Maybe from your own words, what makes cinema so special that cinema will never die? Who wants to go? Who wants to go first? Shall Johnny, we start on one side? Maybe Johnny should answer. In Cantonese. Okay. Oh. Uh, like, like, uh, 我覺得電影咧係<笑>永遠喺喺前前前鋒啊，喺前邊。當如果有極權嘅時候，人民失去自由嘅時候，電影通常係首當其衝。喺好多地方都係一定係停咗你嘅文化電影。嘅文化係直接入 audience 入邊，所以獨裁者通常對付嘅一定係電影。啊，我覺得香港誒 ，no sorry， 我諗全球嘅爭取自由嘅國家同人民咧，佢哋都要支持電影，因為佢係同你發聲嘅。Um, I think that um, cinema represents um, the um, the, f um, the whole part of um, the society, and it's always the um, if the um, to the Italian government want to destroy a place, the first thing that they want to do is to destroy the cinema, and um, um, because cinema it's so close with the public. And it's uh, have a strong connection with the audience, and so when um, and for the whole world, if you want to fight for freedom, the first thing to do is you have to support cinema. Around the world, and I feel like there's a camaraderie amongst each of the directors getting together, because the one thing they believe in is cinema and film, and whether it be Spielberg, who's here, um, uh, or at least in the U.S., um, the Maverick, Top Gun movie, everybody wants to get everyone back to the theater and be supportive, and. As one of the directors that I work with uh, 
you know, Ritu said, you know, it's a miracle for a director to get a movie made these days, and so let's all support each other's work. And I, that's the sense I feel from everybody I work with. So, thank you. Even if, honestly, if, if, if anyone thinks that this is becoming obsolete, I think just like take a, a quick glance in your rear view mirror. We have never stopped telling each other stories, how we do it, who consumes it, how much it costs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like we're kind of headed towards oblivion on that level, but um, I also think that there's a sort of like vital, dis desperate need <coughs> in all of us to create something, and we're gonna consume the things that each other make forever. And yeah, I, I, I think when you start really fixating on like the industry of it, it's easy to be like, oh God, it's all falling apart. But I just think that there's something vital that's undeniable and will never go away. And I know that's like hopeful and optimistic and not what he just said, but I also agree with what he just said. It is stupid and embarrassing. I think the film is not using money to measure. I've seen a few films, not more than 200 million Chinese films. And I think I'm very happy and very comfortable. 我諗最重要電影都係講緊個 passion 同個 vision。如果冇咗呢個 passion 同個 vision， 根本所有藝術家都做唔到自己應該做嘅事。哪管佢俾一百億你，你係冇，你就係冇；你有，你就係有。Um, I have. Produce or have made movie that's with um, very low budget. Some of them are less than two million Hong Kong dollar, but still I was very happy throughout the productions. And um, for me, film it's filmmaking is about passion and um, vision. If you don't have passion or visions, no artist can make a good film, even though you have like ten billion budget. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. Tonight. David Martos from Spain. I have a question for Carla Simon. Um, last year, you were the winner of the Golden Bird with Alcaraz. I, I wanted to know what does this award mean to you and to your career, and how are you preparing yourself to judge other directors in the light of having been the winner? I don't know if you want to answer in English or Spanish. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Judging feels like a strange word to me. <laughs> I think what we are going to do is to discuss, no? And, and it feels a big responsibility as well because I, I know what it means and probably you too know that it's suddenly a film that uh, you never know where it's going to go when you have a prize like this. It goes everywhere, no? And it travels and it gets farther and farther uh, than you could ever imagine, no? So Alcaraz has been seen almost every country and by many people, and I think in part is a uh, big part <laughs> is thanks of this prize, no? So I think that we have a responsibility to pick a film that uh, has an impact on us, no? And that uh, we feel that this push can be. Uh, good for, for the film and also for the filmmaker that uh, probably will be someone that we we trust and, and we want to keep watching films by this person. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Hello, my name is Oras, uh, Esquire Kazakhstan. I have a question for Radu uh, regarding the generally Romanian cinema. How has the uh, award two years ago impacted you, your work? How has it changed? Like and how has it impacted uh, Romanian cinema in general, and what do you believe will be the future of Romanian and maybe Eastern European cinema? Well, it's, uh, it's nice that using this expression, Romanian cinema, just makes me remember that uh, uh, Jean-Claude Carrière, in the book he wrote about uh, Bunuel and how they work together, they says that whenever uh, they felt uh, some idea of a script is stupid, they call this Bulgarian cinema. They said, uh, <laughs> They could have called it Romanian cinema as well, <laughs> you know. So uh, already the expression sounds quite, uh, you know, we can speak about American cinema, French cinema, not so sure about German cinema, but Romanian cinema sounds a bit ridiculous anyway. Uh, uh, what can I say? Of course, it's uh, it's very important for the film. It's a it's a great honor. Too much, uh, so so much, so big that I don't think about it, because uh, you know it it sometimes can get to your head and to consider that yourself. Uh, I don't know, but but still, I'm a Eastern European Romanian filmmaker, and 
I don't know if that impacted Romanian cinema. I mean, apart from uh, people uh, telling me uh, how is it possible that such a piece of shit won a golden bear, <laughs> or uh, some influencer writing something like, I know how this movie, how, how these awards are given. It's even by Soros money, or by. Uh, <laughs> by uh, uh, payment of the film center from every country, and it was Romanian's turn, when, uh, <laughs> according to them. So, well, apart from that, uh, I couldn't say more about it, but I managed to do another film, uh, 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 actually two films, a feature film and a montage documentary, and, uh, well, that's, that's, for me, the most important thing, and that's the measure of success to be able to, to go on. Because uh, for a Romanian filmmaker, to use your wonderful expression, for Romanian cinema, the question of making films is, uh, is, is always on the edge of impossibility. So I made another film, so I don't care for the moment. <laughs> so actually, I'm afraid it's time to, to say goodbye for now and wish you a, a beautiful day, a beautiful first day at the, at the Berlinale. Thank you. Thank you.